Hi, welcome back to Hollow Creek Pottery. Um, I'm Tiffany. I am the owner and main potter here, even though we have quite a few potters working out of this studio, which is amazing. I wanted to develop a pottery community and I have done that. I've got the most amazing people that work here. Anyway, or they don't, nobody works here. We all play here. I am, um, if you've been following along <laughs> in sequence of the way the videos are, and you're wondering why she never changes her clothes, this is all being videotaped on one day. I've been doing a bunch of videos, so I have them in the queue because I have a knee replacement on the 12th of October, and I don't know how long it'll be until I can get back in the studio, and I wanted to have some videos to share with you while I'm recuperating, and hopefully I'm gonna put myself kinda in school and see what else I can learn about making videos. Um, Today, or this afternoon, since it's the same day, we've already done angels and we've done fairies. Now, <laughs> totally switching gears. Or making halibut. I love halibut. Um, I grew up in Alaska, done a lot of halibut fishing. Um, there's just nothing better. Um, I actually have halibut in my freezer that's been fresh caught by my mother. That's the kind of mom you want. <laughs> Brings you fish. I'm also going to do, is that upside down? That's upside down. I'm also going to do salmon plates because, you know, fishermen, fisherman family, we eat a lot of fish. In fact, fish is my favorite. Seafood is my favorite food. I am actually one of those that do not like beef. Um, I will eat seafood. Second choice is chicken. Um, Hardly ever. If I eat any type of beef, it's hamburger. I have never liked steak. Um, I get a lot of ribbing, ha, <laughs> ribeye steak. Ha, ah, crack myself up. Um, from people in my family. Um, my dad's side of the family are all farmers from Idaho and uh, beef cattle, um, Angus beef and that kind of thing. And nope, not a fan. So if I have fish is on the menu, if I'm at a restaurant, I will pick fish every single time. Anyway, so let's make some fish plates. Even though I'm landlocked here in Utah, I eat a lot of fish. And how amazing would it be to eat fish or anything out of these halibut plates? So I will show you how I made them. I've got a slab prepared. It's about 3 8 I'm going to lower you down. So hold on to your seat. It might be a bumpy ride. <laughs> Still getting the... The hang of this thing. All right, so I do have a couple of GR pottery forms. These are two different sizes of the oval. Um, I use one for the halibut, one for the salmon. Okay. What um, I did, so I drew out a rough halibut. So here I just did it out of foam, craft foam, and I am going to cut some halibut. Let's see. And I will just go around with my knife. These are the easiest plates. Oh my goodness, they were so much fun. So I'm going to go around my form, pick up my fin, My favorite place to halibut fish is in Homer, Alaska, and if I had any choice, I would be living in Homer, Alaska. That has got to be one of the most beautiful places in the world. Um, if you don't know where Homer, Alaska is, it is a, um, a drinking village with a fishing, with a fishing problem. That's <laughs> what they, their welcome sign says. And it's the halibut fishing capital of the world. So, actually, let me see if I can pull my slab out of my way. Okay, the best way to do this is actually to do it on a board so you can easily pick up your fish. Okay, so I've got my fish cut out. I actually need to move you a little closer. Let's see here. I want to cover up my slab because it's now afternoon and as fall goes in Utah, 
it is almost 80 degrees. We get down into like the 40s at night. Actually, even 30s during the fall. And then heat up to 80, 85 degrees in the daytime. So let me actually pull this over here. I'll have to. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to put that under there too. And we'll move this guy over here. So these are actually really simple to do, and you might not want to do fish, but um, you could easily do anything. I'm going to lower you down just a little bit more. You need to see less of me and more of the clay. All right. Is that better? That's better. Okay. So I've got my fish out of my pattern. You could do any pattern. You could do bunny rabbits. You could do frogs. Um, I mean, any shape that uh, you can think of, I bet you could figure out a way to do. So I'm just going to come in here, smooth this guy out. Just, I don't want any rough edges. And I will smooth the other side. You know what, I gotta pay attention because these are actually, they stack. I gotta make sure they're going the right way. So I don't turn it around and the fish is the other way and won't stack. That's another thing. There are things that you have to think about when you are making functional pottery. How's it gonna fit in a cupboard? You know, if you make really, really big plates, cupboards um, won't take a plate. They won't stack in a cupboard if the diameter is more than uh, 12 inches. Most cupboards, unless, you know, somebody has really, really deep custom cabinets. So there's things like that that, you know, when you're starting out and making functional wear, that you're not necessarily, you just don't have any clue um, until you go to put a big 12 inch plate into a cabinet and it doesn't fit. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> anyway, so 11 inches, okay? Throw your plates to 11 inches and then by the time they shrink, they're perfect. All right, so now I've got my fish. So I am going to this set this guy kind of in the middle. If you'll notice, the tail is the handle. This would be great serving dishes too. You know, you could put, oh, you could put crab dip in them or you could put salmon dip. Oh, make the great salmon dip. Habanero, cream cheese, and smoked salmon. Ooh, yummy, I'm getting hungry, I haven't had lunch. Okay, so I'm gonna set my pottery form right there. And of course, I need another board. Always need another board. So here's my board. It's always a good idea to maybe wash off your board <laughs> before you put your clay on it. So I'm going to set this on here. I'm going to pick it all up and I'm going to flip it over. And then I'm going to take it off. How simple is that? So I did move my halibut just a little bit, but I'm okay there. And I want the fins to lay against the board. And this is perfect for, you know, having this, because it's going to dry like this for a little while. I will take it off when it's about leather hard, because I don't want it shrinking around the form. But I will leave it on here for a few hours. And so it's going to give that tail um, time to stiffen up. So then I'm going to take this guy and i'm not going to go this direction i'm going to come up if you go the other direction you're going to pull clay around clay away from this edge this is where you'll end up getting your cracking if you do that if you pull clay up to that edge then it's not going to thin it out and won't crack you can ask me how i know that too <laughs> Take it from me, who's, who's, I've done pottery for many, many years. And uh, I learn pretty much throughout life, throughout pottery, I learn the hard way. <laughs> that just seems to be 
the way I do it. So, one thing I'm also going to do right now, anytime I do any plates that are hand built, I will put my big stamp on the bottom of them. Okay. This is my big stamp. It has a mountain and Hobble Creek pottery on it. So then I'm just going to smooth everything, smooth my edges, spend some time cleaning up like we've talked before. And then I'm going to just set it aside and do the salmon. And then when they are um, leather hard or soft leather hard, more like le leather hard, I'll take them off the forms when they're soft leather hard. And then I will carve them. This is all carved. Ooh, that would not be good. Man, I tell you, I'm an accident waiting to happen. Um, these are all carved in, and then the glaze has filled this in. And the glaze on this is um, Clayscapes Shadow Blue and Orbe. And I literally just dipped it and dipped it. Super simple. That's why another reason why these are so much fun to make. Because I can make, if I had more forms, I should probably buy a couple of more in this shape. It's actually the form, since I only have one of each size, that um, makes these longer to make because I have to wait for them to dry on the form. All right, that's it. So I will set this guy aside and let him stiffen up and we will work on the next one. So, oops. we will grab some more of this big slab that I, as you can see, I plan to make a lot today. And if you watch the angels, I need to get on holiday stuff. And what am I doing? Well, let's see, I've, I have procrastinated and made, oh, there it is. I have made angels. I have made fairies, and now I'm making fish. But I have all day in the studio, just me, and I'll get it done. So, what I'm actually gonna do, let's see, let's move this aside. I'm gonna put it on the form. Can you even see me? Ah, ready to go for a ride? Woohoo! Look at that. You never knew you could move so fast. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to cut this guy out, and I'm just going to cut him out right on the form. Okay, I, um, it doesn't need to be a. Um, I'm not going to have any fins hanging over, so I'm just going to use the form as my template and cut it out. Okay. And get that off there. Now I'm going to move you back. All right. So I'm going to take this guy. Again, I am just going to spend some time, not very much time, just smoothing this off. Because I'll smooth it again. I'll find another. See that red clay? It just shows up everywhere right now. See if I can wipe some of that off. If not, we'll get a little bit of red clay in the salmon. But most we eat red salmon so it works okay so i'm going to carefully turn this over i don't want to stretch the clay but um it's okay if it gets a little stretched out but i don't really want to stretch it out the hardest part for me doing this is to get the clay on the form centered. So I eyeball it, kind of use my fingers, kind of give me somewhat of a guide. Hopefully they're talking to me. And then I will just press it on this form. And then again, I will just let it hang out. I've got something in there. Always something that gets into the clay. Got a couple of somethings. So we'll get those out. 
move that back out. Take this, and I'm just trying to give it this shape, okay? Just laying down that edge over that form. And then come back in with my sponge. And then just, oh, I picked up a lot of fun stuff there. We can get that out. So these are going to set up for a little while and then I will be back to show you how I carve them. And then I'll be making more. Okay, that's it for now and I'll see you in a few. Okay, I am back. It is actually two days after I did these. Um, last minute things I've got to get done today. Um, before I go in tomorrow for surgery. So my list is ever growing and I still have one halibut left to carve. I've carved four of them and see how nicely they all stack together. So I've got one more to do that I ran out of time last night. There's never enough time in the studio. You always think, oh, that'll be easy. I can do that. That's not a problem. But um, yeah, you get carried away out here and things take a little bit longer than you think. So what I usually do if I'm gonna carve, I like a sponge. Get yourself a heavy duty, um, you know, if you've got a couch that your husky has um, eaten up, which, um, ask, ask me how I know that, um, <laughs> then take those cushions, those high density foams and cut them up and use them for the studio. And it's a good idea if you can to have some in storage because you don't want to keep these around. Um, well, I've had after after so long, they they get too much dust in them. You know, it just hides in there, and so you you want to you know clean them out or replace them. So me cleaning not the best. So replace <laughs> better option. So what I do this is this is the foam template template that I cut these guys out with. Okay. And I take a piece of paper, um, or a pe if you can get vinyl, I know Joanne sells like um, picnic tablecloth vinyl that's not very much. That's great. I actually looked around for mine when I was doing this and couldn't find where I'd stashed it. So I just grabbed one of my garment bags and drew out my the inside of my halibut that I wanted to carve. And what you can do is you can lay that over the piece that you're going to carve um, and use it as a template. So I've got a couple of tools here. One is a diamond core um, tool. I'm not sure which one this is. It's a L2. If you can read that, it's an L2. I really, really like this one. Um, it's very pointy on one end, wider on the other. I don't know if you can see how wide I actually use this this end a lot more and then um, I use just this little cheap um, stylus um, I use this first because I don't want it to cut through the plastic I just want an impression of where I'm going and this one is a Dolan tool that I really really love um, I use it a lot so when it comes to Mishima or um, Scrofito um, so many different um, great artists out there, but check out Monique and Bonaire. She, I have got to try the way she's doing stuff with the um, um, mason stains and making her own slips. That's on my list for next year. I am going to do that. So, but check out her carving. She's she's definitely a master. Okay, so what I do is I line it up over my fish, and then I'm just going to come in and. Um, and I'm not, I mean, I've done five of these, well, six if you count the one that's finished. And so I'm not too, I don't actually, I'm not too anal about this, I guess is the word. Actually, I'm not too anal about very much. I kind of very much go with the flow. And if I make a mistake, I see where that mistake takes me. It, and mistakes to me are opportunities to try something else. So I'm just going through 
and getting my main lines down so I know where the gills are going to be. And the nice thing about the plastic is that um, it moves, it doesn't soak up like paper soaks up um, the moisture in the clay and uh, creates a whole bunch of problems. It gets really wrinkly, you can't see where you're at. And uh, so the plastic works really well. The vinyl works the best, so highly recommend. I wish I had made this pattern on the vinyl. I do plan to, the more people who see these halibut fish or fish plates, the more people want them. <laughs> so I will be doing a vinyl pattern so that I have that in my stash. So if you'll notice, um, and there's no, I, I'm sure that the camera is not picking this up. On the B mix clay, it's really hard to pick this up. But I've only done the gills, the mouth, and the eyes, and then the main line down the body. Um, because I don't need to do all of it. Because I've done so many of these, you get to where um, you know where you're going. So, and then I'm just going to come in here. I like to start with that main main line and the thing about carving that you want to do is you want to I've actually already already lost my line <laughs> you want to um, make a continuous line don't start stop like I just did try to do a continuous line I'm gonna try and show you what I mean with um, the tail here so if I take this tail make that main line that I'm going to make. I usually start with the tail, I usually start with the center. This is actually a little bit hard, um, more leather hard than I like. And swoop them down, you know, commit to the line and just do it. And if you mess up, you're the only one who's going to know that you mess up. So just go with it. But see, there's his tail. And the glaze is just gonna, the glaze is your, it's gonna fill in stuff and do fun stuff and really um, highlight everything that you're doing. So don't get too crazy about it. You'll drive yourself nuts. And then I'm gonna do his fin. This one's actually a very simple design fish are fun <laughs> at least I think they're fun and then here's the outside fin I actually didn't even bother to put this one on the pattern because I'm just following the line of the fish itself so I've got to get his other little fin out here so I will draw him out and then continue the big swoop. I actually really like doing these these ones here because you can just doesn't really matter. You're just making the little bones in his outer fins. Halibut are funny fish. They actually are flat fish or a flounder type fish and so they literally swim this way. You know they just like this in the water and their eyes are on top of their heads so they're a funny looking fish but boy are they tasty Ooh, love it I wonder if I have time to put halibut on the menu tonight would be fitting make all these halibut plates and it's a good idea if you've got something sitting out here like this and you're putting a lot of pressure to support it with your hand this is what I don't like about it being a little harder, more leather hard than I like, is um, sometimes the tool will skip. So if I had gotten to this yesterday, it would have been perfect, but that's okay. You do what you can. All right. So I didn't take very long. Take a brush and get all those goobers off. If you do this when it's too soft, you will have so many burrs and goobers to clean up. It's not, it'll take you too much time to clean up. 
So you definitely need to find, as with pottery, you need to find that um, sweet spot of um, when it's perfect to do. Pottery is all about timing. So now I'm just doing his gills. And we'll go in. I'm actually saving his eyes because I know in his mouth. Because I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch tools. Go to this diamond cord tool because I'll have a little bit more control over doing these curves, especially since my clay is drier than I like. I'm doing his lips. And I sometimes <laughs> refer back. Can't really read my lines, so I've got to refer back to what I actually did. There we go. He actually looks like a sad fish. <laughs> he's kind of got a sad mouth, I guess. Probably because he knows he's going to be my dinner. My sister is actually... Every time we go halibut fishing, she's going to catch the biggest fish. My sister and my mom. My poor brother... He's the main fisherman in the family. But if he goes fishing with my mom or my sister or even me, I've outfished him with halibut, um, we're going to catch the bigger fish. <laughs> and a side note, I am the only one in my family who gets seasick. So fishing starts when I chum the waters. And for those of you who are not fishermen, chumming the waters is throwing up. That's when the, the saying goes, the fishing gets started after Tiffany chums the waters. It's kind of true. But even though it makes me sick, I still love to do it. All right, so now I'm just doing his eyes, finishing up. And with this tool, I can go in and make my lines a little deeper, too. All right. I don't know if I can do this. Where's my pen? When the clay is soft enough... Nope, wrong one. Oh, there it is. When the clay is soft enough, I can bring my pen in here and do his eyeball. But, oh, good. I was worried that it wasn't going to be... wasn't going to be able to let me do that. Okay, so there's my halibut, and that pen makes the best eyes. I tell you, get yourself an old pen. Take the ink out of it and use the end of it. It's a great tool. So then when I'm done, I'll um, sweep off all my um, little bits, and then the magic happens when you bring in the sponge and you just soften everything that you just did. This is the magic part. And you just come in here and you just soften all those lines. And then you are done. So that didn't take me very long. Granted, I've done, this is my sixth or seventh one, I'm not sure. But um, I'm getting pretty good at it. Make sure his eyes are cleaned up. And then after I've softened, especially by changing the tool, um, I might need to, I wonder if I can do this now, take the bigger tool, come in here and carefully go around his mouth and eyes again, just to make those deeper and match the lines of the other ones that I've done. There we go. That looks much, much better. Okay, give his mouth a little bit more definition. And he is ready to go on the shelf and dry out and uh, get glazed. And pretty soon we'll be eating off of him. Actually, this one's going places. I've already sold a bunch of these. <laughs> so this halibut's going places. All right, so that's how you... <clears throat> do a little bit of carving, um, make some halibut, make some fish, and <laughs> I probably should just try to pull this guy up 
there we go rather than try to get down so you can see me I thanks for watching thanks for subscribing um, this channel has just kind of taken off in the last month and it's exciting it's exciting to meet other potters and and uh, converse with you I guess not meet but virtually meet I love all the comments and um, just really appreciate all you guys and uh, let's see where this channel takes us so subscribe like comment i will get to your comments sometimes it takes me a couple days but i will definitely get to your comments and answer any questions you have and uh um yeah if you can get out in the pottery all right have a great day bye